In this video, we're going to make some sodium nitrate, NaNO3. Sodium nitrate has been a side product of a couple of other experiments I've done, but I've never focused on just making this and purifying it. Some brief information, it's an alkali metal nitrate salt. Sodium is the alkali metal, the nitrate's obvious, and the salt is because there's an electrostatic connection between the sodium and the nitrate. Sodium nitrate occurs naturally, and it was first mined in the Atacama Desert in Chile, in the 1830s and to this day it's also known as chili saltpeter to separate it from potassium nitrate which is just known as saltpeter. Most of the sodium nitrate was mined from fossilized bird feces. It has a melting point of 308 degrees celsius, 586 fahrenheit and a boiling point of 380 degrees celsius or 716 degrees fahrenheit. It has a rather extensive use for fertilizer, pyrotechnic, smoke bombs, explosive glass manufacturing, solid rocket motors, and food preservation. It is not combustible itself, just like potassium nitrate, but it accelerates the burning of other combustibles. Here's a rather crude diagram, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like. The nitrogen's in the middle. There are two single bonded oxygens here with a double bonded oxygen at the top. The total uh, electrical charge on this is negative, and the sodium is down here all by itself. It's a positive, and of course, they're connected because of those different charges. The materials we need are ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, 83 grams. It actually requires 80 grams, but in the end when we purify this, we want to have all of the sodium hydroxide, which is the next step, uh, used up. Because when it's purified with the acetone in the end, if this is all used up, this is soluble in sodium nitrate. I'm sorry, soluble in acetone, but sodium nitrate is not. So we'll be able to wash it successfully with the acetone. And we also need water, 100 milliliters times two. The reaction is very simple and as follows. This is a double displacement reaction. The sodium hydroxide plus the ammonium nitrate yields ammonia hydroxide and sodium nitrate. That'll be the first step. The second step, we have, we have to get rid of this ammonia hydroxide, which is done through heat. And if you heat ammonia hydroxide, you'll give off ammonia as a gas and water, which, of course, because we're heating this in the very end, will boil off. Our methods are as follows. Number one, dissolve the sodium hydroxide in 100 milliliters of water. Separately, dissolve the ammonia nitrate in 100 milliliters of water. Then slowly combine these two. It is rather exothermic. Let it cool completely. And then we're going to put it into a wide based, um, probably I'll use that Pyrex dish that I have, and we're going to heat it to boil. And when we're doing that, we're obviously boiling off the uh, ammonia gas here. So you have to do this outdoors somewhere or where there's a lot of room. And the HOH is left over, which of course is H2O. And we will be boiling that off also. Next, we're going to scrape the material out of here, which I have a feeling won't be fun. Usually it isn't. Then using filtration, I'll probably use vacuum filtration in the interest of time. We're going to wash the sodium nitrate with acetone because it's insoluble. And what we should have left at the very end here is sodium nitrate and any excess ammonia nitrate because we used more of this than that. And that is soluble and acetone should get washed away. Once we have washed and dried out the sodium nitrate, um, I'll probably mix it with something like sugar and see how well it burns just to see the quality of our sodium nitrate. It should be good, but that's it. Let's go make our sodium nitrate. 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, pre-weighed. A slightly excess 83 grams of ammonium nitrate, pre-weighed. 200 milliliters of distilled water to be used in two 100 milliliter portions. I have 100 milliliters of distilled water here. I'm just gonna start stirring and then we're gonna add our 83 grams of ammonium nitrate. Let's turn this down a wee bit there. There we go. Done. This has come back up to room temperature after it cooled down, but obviously it's very cloudy. The ammonia nitrate uh, pearls that I used and I, I had crushed them uh, came from fertilizer, and this is not that uncommon. So what I'm going to do uh, is filter this first before we use it in the experiment. I have a two micrometer filter paper here, so it will collect uh, anything, even the smallest of pieces that are in here. Uh, but it's gonna be slow also because of that. So I will be back. Our ammonia nitrate solution after filtering came out really nice and clear, which is what we wanted. Set that aside now, move on to dissolving the sodium hydroxide. I scraped the residue off the filter paper and put it in this beaker and then added a ton of distilled water here and you can see it still didn't dissolve. So there is quite a bit of insoluble material in those prills, and uh, it's not uncommon, like I said, for your solution to be cloudy. Get the stir bar going here. And 
And in goes the 40 grams of sodium hydroxide. Done. That's much easier as there's no clouding, of course. So I'm going to turn this down. It's still pretty warm. Of course, this is an exothermic mix here. So I'm going to let that cool down. And then I transfer the sodium hydroxide to this 500 milliliter beaker and put some ice around because this next step is really exothermic. So we'll uh, start adding the ammonium nitrate bit by bit. Without the ice, this has a habit of boiling when it goes in. I'm not sure if it will now or not, but... Seems like the ice is helping quite a bit. All right, there's quite a bit to add, and I'm going to do it really slow. I will be back when I'm done. We've just completed the double displacement reaction, so our sodium hydroxide and ammonium nitrate have become ammonium hydroxide and sodium nitrate, which is what we're trying to make. I'm going to let this mix real good. Like, you know, I added more ammonium nitrate that is probably necessary, of course, to make sure all of the sodium hydroxide reacted. So I'm going to come back after maybe an hour. It's been just over an hour. So I think that's uh, a lot of mixing and enough there. Um, it looks like some sodium nitrate, of course, has formed. that It turned white early on. Uh, next step, we need to heat it. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is to break down the ammonia hydroxide into ammonia gas and water. Um, and thereby eliminating it essentially from the mix. And the second reason is so we can get our final product of the sodium nitrate. I'm going to transfer this 200 milliliters of our mix here into this 10 by 10 Pyrex dish where we're going to heat it. Once I pull out the uh, magnetic stir there, and since we're getting rid of the water anyways, I'm going to add a little bit more by rinsing out this uh, 500 milliliter beaker this stuff was just in. Just make sure we get everything we can. All right, there we go. That's pretty cleared out. Turn on the heat. Just one more thing about this step. This is, of course, where the ammonia gas gets released. There will be quite a bit of it, so it needs to be done under a fume hood or outdoors, just someplace where it won't accumulate. Here's our sodium nitrate almost completely dried out, but um, it's going to take a couple more minutes. I can still hear a few crackles as the last bits of water uh, dry up. Once this cools down, though, we'll scrape it together, and we only have one last step yet, uh, left, and that's to wash it with acetone. I tried to etch this stuff, and it is ex really hard. I was hoping to do this on camera, but it's just going to take far too long, so I will be back. This is one of those things you never want to have to do twice. Because it's so hard and still so chunky, I am going to grind it in a mortar and pestle. Done with that. I'm going to start loading this stuff in. I don't know if all the sodium nitrate is going to fit in here or not, but I'm going to start and hopefully it all will. On to the next step. We're going to go ahead and turn this on. And rinse with acetone, which I have right here. And I just have a small dropper I'm going to use to start. Again, because we used extra ammonia nitrate, which is soluble in acetone, that should wash out. There shouldn't be any sodium hydroxide in here. And the sodium nitrate itself is insoluble in acetone. I think that's more than good enough there, and I'll stop this, take it apart. I'm going to scrape out our wet sodium nitrate here, which is already drying up. don't want it to dry up too much and turn into a block in here. All right, let's go ahead and weigh this stuff. See how much sodium nitrate we made. The theoretical yield worked out stoichiometrically, of course, is 85 grams. And let's see where we're at with this. It's 
75.22 grams. And that is 75.22 divided by 85. It's almost exactly 85 equals times 100. So we got a yield of 88.49%. Not totally surprising because it's a single displacement reaction, basically. But um, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm very happy with that. To test our sodium nitrate, I'm going to take a little bit out of here. Not much at all. It won't take much. Maybe a little more than that, though. And mix it with about equal amounts of sucrose or table sugar here. About. All right, I'm going to mix this up good, and then I have a fuse. I'll put it in there and light it outside and see what happens. This is a small amount, and it's really not mixed great, but what I'm looking for it to do is burn because neither sodium nitrate nor sugar burns on its own, but mixed they will. So if we actually have sodium nitrate here, this should burn somewhat. Again, nothing spectacular. Again, nothing spectacular, but yeah, we got sodium nitrate and I think it's pretty darn pure.